Well, hello everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. My name is Jason Levine, and thank you so much for joining me today for the Friday Masterclass, where today, once again, we are revisiting collaboration. But this time, I've got two new special guests, and specifically, we're going to be talking about collaborative workflows, remote collaborative workflows between Premiere and After Effects. A lot of you have been asking about this. Last week, we featured LucidLink. Prior to that, we were kind of deep diving into team projects. Well, now you're going to get to see all of this come together whilst using Premiere and After Effects together with two people who are also editing in totally different remote locations. So yes, not like we have to prove that to you, and most of us are remote these days, but this is really sort of a, a proof positive, like how this works, the efficiency, the speed, the process, and uh, uh, these two incredible guests who are going to join me momentarily. They're super fun. They love getting into the weeds, kind of talking about all the technical aspects of all these things, how to set it up, how to organize, how to make it efficient when you're working in this kind of remote environment particularly when you're working between Premiere and After Effects. So that's coming up for you. We've got a lot of stuff to cover. As always, we're coming to you live across multiple networks. In fact, today we are on all the networks. We are on Adobe Live, on Behance, several YouTube channels, Twitch, LinkedIn, and the Twitters. So th thank you so much wherever you are watching. Great to see you. And as always, a couple of quick shout outs to everyone. See, we've got uh, Gino Marbella. Great to see you again. Robert Wenneberg, Uma Korn. All right, Steve, how's it going? Z by HP, and Tim, and Michael, and Robert. Stephanie, how is it going? Someone asking if I can play. <laughs> also, Spock Zarathustra on the keyboards. <laughs> ba -da, da -da, da -da. I would actually, I'm, I can't lie to you. I know I said the studio is done, everything's all done. I actually haven't wired the synths in yet. Everything else is wired behind them, but the actual synths aren't wired yet. So. We'll see, we'll target that maybe for next week's stream when we kind of wrap this little collaboration series, but um, I will I will try and make that happen for you, all right? We shall see. And what's up, we got Crucial here. Great to see you, thank you so much. Okay, so listen, let's go ahead and get right into it. Uh, so I've got two guests joining us from Gannett USA Today. And uh, again, they're gonna talk about not only sort of how to do this sort of remote work, leveraging things like team projects, they too also take advantage of LucidLink. Wanna thank LucidLink again for kind of uh, show, showing up last week in our chats and answering a lot of our users' questions. And uh, they are wonderful people to boot. So my guests are Justin Schultz and Mike DeAngelis. Wonderful to see you both. Hello. Hello. Uh, thanks very much, Jason, for having us. Uh, we're excited to be here. This should be fun. Um, yeah, we'll just get right into intros. Um, uh, my name is Justin Schultz. Uh, I work for Gannett, which is the parent company of USA Today. Um, I work for a division called USA Today Studios. I'm the senior video editor for digital franchises out of there. Um, and so what I do, I'm, I'm a senior editor. I'm actually also a post-production supervisor or manager. So I I, uh, I own all of our workflows. Um, I own most of our media management, um, and I just pretty much keep things on the rails uh, on a day-to-day -day basis, and uh, you know, make sure everyone's kind of putting that spit shine on things um, at the end. So, um, our studio—it's—it's it's a really kind of wide-ranging digital studio. We do everything from a, you know half-hour docu-series uh, style shows to mid-form to short-form to social and everything in between. You know, and I. I'd say we probably, um, what I oversee, probably about maybe five hours of content a month would be uh, a decent uh, estimate uh, between what comes out. Um, lots of remote work, uh, as you're mm -hmm. going to see. Uh, we, we jumped in pretty early um, in pandemic to things like products like Team Projects uh, and yeah. LucidLink. And it's been it's been a really fun journey of discovery and, and, and working um, in this new world. And we're excited to get into it. So I'll toss it over to Mike. Yeah. Thanks, yeah. Justin. Um, so yeah, I am the um, senior motion designer here at USAT Studios. Um, I work very closely with Justin, obviously. Um, and what my team does is basically we make the motion graphics that you see in the pieces that Justin's talking about, the different series. Um, and we also service um, the wider USA Today video team. So people making short form videos in lots of different remote locations. Um, we're making templates, we're making one-off graphics, you know, so yeah, it's and, basically, you know, and to the point of kind of remote collaboration, you know, Gannett is a company that owns not just USA Today, but over 200 local newspaper properties right. across the country. And, you know, and each one of these has uh, a video department too. And so, you know, we're actually just through our Adobe Enterprise account and through some of these collaborative tools, we're actually able to service 
that entire network really just kind of between the two of us in some yeah. uh, in, in some capacity. <laughs> <That's amazing. laughs> um, it's it's really and you know um, we're gonna show you a little bit of that, but um, it's yeah it's it's pretty cool and we you know we've really been able to find find some um, some pretty simple things. So uh, a way uh, simple ways of doing these pretty you know things that we wouldn't have imagined trying to do a couple of years ago so um yeah and i ima and i imagine on, on on a large part having sort of gotten into this sort of involuntarily in the sort of pandemic era now you've really refined how to make that work and how to be more efficient regardless of where people are to really service all the various properties across the country and elsewhere yeah community. exactly yeah. and you know what's what we find you know as you know as you say as these kind of as these workflows and these tools have sort of matured and figuring out how to use them you know we find that even like we we're adopting these things even when we are all together and if we are in the same spot and and you know we we're doing the hybrid thing so we've got you know a requirement to be in the office sometimes you know we do have a studio so there's a physical presence that you know just sometimes you got to be in the studio um right. <laughs> but what's really nice about these workflows is that they work across remote they work across hybrid we we're you know and we we love what we've been able to accomplish in them so much that you know we're even going to stick to this even if we're co-located and on the same server and, and on the same machine. So, um, nice. yeah, it's, it's really fun. So I, I, I think we're ready to kind of just jump back in. Are we ready in. to get into it? Let's, okay, let's, so let's do it. Justin, I assume we're going to start with your, your machine yeah, first. Yeah, and, start, uh, yeah, start with me and we'll, we'll hand it off over appropriately uh, when we get to Mike. Sounds great. Yep. All right. All right. So, we so um, we're just on the splash screen. I'm just going to go right in. I'm going to uh, go ahead and open our team project. going to get it from our list here. Um, so um, what we're gonna demo is uh, one of our explainer series. It's called Just the Facts, and it's a graphic-driven explainer series. Um, you know, it's a pretty well-known genre at this point. Um, it's VO graphic-driven, uh, it's custom graphic-driven as well, and this fills a, a really nice um, kind of short-form spot on our, on our website, and of course we nice. traffic across uh, places. So, um, so I'm, this is a project that's done, but it's we're gonna kind of just reverse engineer it and show De you sort deconstruct of a little bit, deconstruct yeah. <laughs> and show how the yeah. sausage was made. Um, yeah. So uh, on this project, the the first step is a script is written. Um, we uh, use a lot of producer editors. We're kind of lucky in that sense to have a lot of people who um, are familiar with Premiere, and that really you're gonna see that that is a huge part of what we're trying to leverage in this collaborative mm -hmm. workflow is. People, you know, more and more people can kind of, as I say, get in the boat where you haven't before. And um, I'll get into a little bit of how we have things set up, but just to just speak a little bit about that. There's there's this kind of like paradigm shift that you have to get when, because you have to think about like a, a, a NLE was not a shared space ever. It was the place that an editor sat. And, you know, we all know that there's the, you know, the stere the troll stereotype of the editor in their dark cave uh, never pale, coming out. sweaty and upper lip. Yes, exactly, yeah. you know, and, <laughs> and you know, and, and a lot of editors gravitated towards that. So it actually even becomes, you know, almost this kind of cultural thing we start to have to start to unpack between your teammates and such like that. But, you know, the real part, you know, the real kind of idea that's beyond the, the functions of the product or things like that is like, how do you work in here when this is now a shared space? This is, right. you know, this is not just, okay, I'm gonna just export. No, it, it can be organized however I want. As long as I know where something is, it works. That no longer works. Um, and right. so, you know, one thing we've done is we've taken concepts from, you know, if you've worked on shared storage, um, you can sort of start to bring those concepts in where you have to have organizational structures. You have to have naming structures. Um, otherwise, it just becomes chaos. And the idea is it's pretty simple. It's just like you got to know what where something goes and you need to know what it's called. And if we're all right. on the same page of that, you know, we can move so smoothly. I joke around and I say, look, if, if we're doing everything as, as well as we can, we don't have to ever talk to each other because everything's right. just apparent. You know, it's like, I don't I need to ask anybody where to put this file. I don't need to ask anybody what to call this file because we have this system. And so it just, it, you know, it, and it's beyond the nitty gritty of what we're going to get into. But I've just really found that it's this kind of like, this mind shift of how we're going to collaborate um, and sort of work together. And it, you really start right. to, 
And, and as you, you're going to see, we're going to get these different stakeholders in here. You know, different stakeholders have different approaches to some of these sure. processes that editors are used to owning. So, right. um, do you feel like you have to make an explainer for your explainer in a way? Like, you I know, kind of do sort of actually. That, yeah. that's, that's a good idea. <laughs> yeah. We might have to get that one down. So, okay. um, so it, you know, a lot of it starts with our organizational structure. Um, I will say, since these are serial shows, um, we rely very heavily on project templates um, okay. and we've actually leveraged that both ways we've done we've done it where we've got um, project templates that are team projects um, it's a template you'd open that up you could do a save as and rename it um, right. to make your active one since we are on lucid link um, on a shared storage we can also um, we can, we've also done it where we've used uh, a local project and you just open mm -hmm. the local project I've lost it so um, but you'll open the local project and convert that to team project um, right. which is a, a great function that we use back and forth um, nice. whether we're taking a team project back to local for some reason um, or just it's a kind of a good way to let an individual start a project and get into something get it all set up and then and then just share it out to the team so yeah, um, yeah that makes sense so this, so this project would have been started from uh, a template. So we have a lot of kind of what we call global assets, things like music and sound effects and, and reuse graphics um, are our mogurts for it. Um, and then just preloaded with some bins just to make it easier um, upon ingest and things like that. So, uh, and we even like to use uh, th this, this project in particular doesn't really need uh, a very heavy sequence template because um, it, it, this one's a very from scratch kind of uh, thing, sure, but we do yeah. in other projects have a sequence that's, you know, got a bug loaded into it or certain graphics, an intro, an outro or right. certain music. It's just preloaded. And what I actually love about that is, you know, I'm even loading in track effects on my template. Nice. So it's like, yeah. I know, you know, if I know like this VO is always coming from this same source, like. I, I know what kind of you know EQ or compression I want on it. I can load it in here. It, you know, we you know, throw a hard limiter on the end, and that's great. That's just saved and and becomes templatized, so no yeah, one has to I, worry about setting it up. I love that, and I'm glad you brought that up because I think that's something that sometimes, not unlike audio in general in most productions, it gets lost on people that right. The template project isn't ju isn't just the visual elements, like you said, the visual intro. Maybe it's consistent, you know, logo bugs, lower thirds, or something like that. That assuming people will edit, but it's also the audio mix, right? Like you said, having the hard limiter at the end at a specific level because, and having the right compression and, and everything on those individual tracks because it's, it's going to be a VO coming from the same source, same recording, same microphone, you know, essentially. So you have a starting point and you don't have to fuss about with those things. That's that's huge in terms of knocking this kind of content out. Right? Yeah, and you know, we and, and we work with like I said we work with a lot of producer editors, which is good, but then at this, you know, the flip side of that coin is, you know, folks who who don't have that super deep experience or, you know, right. they don't they, you know, they're not used to the hundreds of or thousands of tasks of micro tasks someone might be doing any <laughs> given day. And, yes. you know, it feels like, oh, that takes me three seconds to reset that setting whenever I start something. But right. you do that a couple hundred times a week and you've it saved yourself up. a lot of time. So yep. Yep, um, absolutely. we love templates. I mean, even things like sequence settings. I mean, if you have specific sequence settings or render formats that you want just baked in so you don't have to worry that a junior editor is going to open up a sequence and not know what to set it to, you got it all right. kind of just preloaded in these templates. So um, preload not only things that we need, but we also can demonstrate our structure in here. You come in and someone, you know, you, you know I always encourage people just poke around, you know, just like get in there, see how it's set up. Cause I'm ba I'm making everything based on patterns. Right? right. And that's, and it's like, I try to set it, everything up as a pattern. You can come in and try to sort of deduce what the pattern is and then make your own choices based on that. It doesn't always go that smoothly, but, um, it's, that's the foundation of the concept, um, to help sort of leverage. Uh, sure. so, you know, you'll see this, it's fairly straightforward, but yeah. you know, the fact that we're kind of in agreement uh, with what we're calling things, uh, with where we're putting things, just helps grease the wheels like so easily. So, yeah, um, I love that. 
Uh, one other small weedy thing I will mention, um, some settings that are kind of important for this workflow that we're doing. Um, uh, first of all, I, you may have covered this last week, but since we are using Lucidlink, one thing that's really important is to not have your media cache set to Lucidlink. Yes. Um, <laughs> that needs to be set that, yeah. on good on your internal super fast yeah. drive. Um, yeah. But I do mention that because the other important setting that uh, that uh, we do adjust in this is uh, our scratch disk settings, um, okay. which we do put on Lucidlink um, for a couple reasons. The the main reason um, is we do use a lot of motion graphics templates, a lot of Mogerts. Not you'll we have some in this one. Um, we right. have uh, some other projects. We, we we've got. 20 different Mogarts that are part of the package. So um, what this does is we make sure we're setting our motion graphics template media scratch uh, to a designated location on Lucidlink. So whenever a Mogart gets imported once, um, it's going to be linked across um, anybody right. who Whomever is up. trying to play that back will have that cache already there. So exactly. And, 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 and you don't awesome. have to. That makes sense. And you don't have to manage that motion graphics template media going to that default place right. on the user's document folder. And then the, it, you know, it's premier has got to track all that, which it can do, but it just simplifies things since we're all in the same spot. Um, the other right. really cool thing is we can actually share video previews. If everyone's got their previews set right. here, I render it on my timeline. The next person who opens it up, whether it's a team project or um, a local project that's all on the same Lucidlink right. file space, um, just render it once, and everybody's got it uh, on their timeline. Right. So. And those and those links, because it's seen as a drive, mount to drive, they're not changing. So they're exactly. going to be there. Makes yeah, makes the concept of having to relink those things kind of go away, which is awesome. Great, great suggestion. Cool. Um, so. Yeah. Yeah, so that's kind of our, our, our basic setup. Um, you know, the idea is to put a place for everything and even to try to sort of proactively think about what might be coming in that you haven't accounted for and give that a place. Um, because, you you know, again, it gets cultural. You find people get gung-ho to put it somewhere and they're like, I, I got an idea or they've got, the, you know, that's why I say it. it's like we really got to be in agreement on how we're, how we're talking things. I mean, like even even if you're talking about a footage bin versus a media bin or, or a video bin, like someone says it's in the footage bin and we're like, well, yeah, but it's actually called the video bin in this project. Like those are, it seems really small, but those are all things that really slow you down and make you got to chat back and forth. And then that person's not available to respond to you. And so, um, but these are all these kind of considerations that we got to make now that multiple people can be in here. So let's get into getting multiple people in here. Let's do it. Um, so I started this, and so the, an example of the way this project could work is um, we're also lucky that our producer editor in this case uh, also is our voiceover talent for it. So um, they're able to really kind of just start the project on their own uh, and get it up and running. So the use case, the example that I've, I've uh, got for you here is that that producer editor would have started the new project from the template. Um, they would record their voiceover. I, do believe they do do it um, on the timeline in Premiere. Um, I okay. don't think they're mm. doing any kind of round trip uh, right now. Uh, so they'll they'll lay down their their VO. Let me get you a little a little more space here. They'll lay down their VO. They're going to go ahead and time it out however they however they want. Because um, the idea is we want to get a basically locked VO track before we hand off to to our editor. So what I have here is I've got our VO track down. Um, excuse me, let me go ahead and show you um, our naming convention here just real quick. It's, um, you know, nothing crazy. It's just some, some a date. There's a department code. There's a franchise code, the name of it. Um, and then, you know, versioning is a sequence versioning is a big topic. And, you know, there's a lot of ways to handle that. Um, and honestly, with some of the additions to team projects, we're, we're rethinking how we do that. But, you know, we we like to just kind of robustly version things um, just sort of for an over communication visibility kind of thing. So our, our, our convention here is we have an 01 for a version. We have initials. That was the person who who 
was on that sequence um, and then if there's any other information. So this was this was uh, our special projects, Just the Facts, Diabetes video, first version that our uh, RJ uh, editor worked on and this was the VO that they laid okay. down. Um, and another small thing, I put the initials, I put the number before the initials so it will sort uh, alpha, um, alphanumerically if I wanted. Yeah. Um, so I'm just, so I have this this VO section, this VO uh, sequence looks good. It's ready to go. Everything's timed out, um, and so now I'm ready to hand it off to my graphic designer. And so, what you know, the way our graphics designer, like Mike's, likes to likes to approach it is that we, since this is going to be partially graphics and partially B-roll, um, our graphics team will take the script and decide which parts that they want to do bespoke graphics for versus which parts are going to be um, uh, like stock B-roll. So this is the point at which our graphics team can go in and just grab what they need, grab the VO sections that they need to work on their graphics. And sure, I could have an editor communicate with the graphics team and export the, the section of the VO that they want, but with team projects, I can just let the designer go and do that because they know what they right. want more than the editor. And we can cut out right. that step of communicating in the telephone and, and where that gets mixed up or miscommunicated. So right. um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to invite uh, Mike now to our project. I'm going to go up here to the uh, collaborator window. going to add it here. Mike's right there at my drop down. going to select him and select invite. Oh, you were already on this one, Mike. I'm going to remove you and reinvite you. How about that? Okay, okay so I'm I'm going to oh oh All right, I'm inviting Mike now and All right, so I'm going to switch over to Mike's screen while you're doing that. Let's we'll go over and of... switch over to Mike, yeah. Yeah. Cool. So I think the first thing I also had the project open which um is a bit tricky, but I just want to show everyone that um the you know, in my Creative Cloud window, I have that invitation waiting. And I'm yep. going to go ahead and accept. It says I've accepted. And now I'm going to open team project. Oh, and it's on this window. Sorry, sorry, everyone. Uh, and it's right here. And I'm going to hit open. And then it's going to look, it should look identical to what Justin just had open. Yeah. And in fact, I actually had the project open. So I was watching, I was watching Justin's um, work in real time. Um, oh, sweet. And so what we're doing here is, you know, this is the actual, the actual uh, uh, sequence. Um, what I will then do is duplicate it, right, using the same convention and just putting my initials at the end. And here you can even see that we've already sort of pre-put in adjustment layers that match um, the highlighted sections of the script um, that we've already talked about and decided are going to be part of the... Um, what will be graphics, what will be graphic yeah. laid in sections. So what I'm doing though, and we have a little sample here, I can play some. So we put in a little section that we, you know, this is sort of our demo section. It's actually, instead of uh, our normal producer, it's just- It can affect your heart, lungs, and brain. So there we're gonna say like, that's my section. You know, that's a section for Mike. It's highlighted yellow in the script. We use different colors of highlighting. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, what I will do is I will, you know, in our global assets, we have these adjustment layer, we have an adjustment layer file, you know, and we're simply, you know, we're doing something very simple of pulling it in, you know, it's already this color. And, you know, what we do, which is a little bit um, for the sake of, you know, keeping things, uh, you know, as, as sort of clear as possible, we're also, you know, changing the color so that it matches exactly what, you know. And, you know, one way we use this, too, is you know, sometimes it's a single designer on it, but, you know, we can basically, uh, you know, be assigning it. You know, Mike's what Mike's saying is, that, like I said, they, they go through an actual word script and they'll like highlight the sections that are going to a different designer. Right. So Mike's actually putting the highlight color from that word doc that corresponds to the designer who's getting assigned that section. Right. You know, we Love can even that. get that granular if we want. Hey, Mike, and, can I ask you to also make your, uh, just pull Premiere so it's kind of filling the screen there so we can, there you go. Thank like you. that? Great. Yeah, perfect. 
Yeah. By the way, let me ask you this. I just did this whole little investigative, uh, little investigative journalism on Reddit around sort of features that people love and don't love so much. And something that came up a lot was, and I'm bringing this up because you're talking about labels, that we need more than 16 labels. Do you, do you find in the stuff you're doing, like you're, you're hitting a wall with the color labels and everything? You could use well, more? No, um, I because because okay. I do know you can make a custom one, but I did you know what is interesting is that's like a setting that you you know if I wanted my collaborator to have that same color if I made a custom one that I'd have to work around. Um, Mike and I did discuss the naming of your label colors as sometimes mm. not the <laughs> totally intuitive. Yeah, yes. <laughs> I I will say I do really enjoy the sort of analogous feature in Illustrator where you can change the layer yeah. color. So I yeah. do like that there are moments when I'm like, oh, I wish I could pick a different, a slightly different color. So, but that's but I'm some... also on the design team. So you know, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, but actually, something a, a good label feature that I realize that I, th I think is a recent update is the ability to. Uh, choose whether you're showing uh, timeline layers or s labels or source labels um, granularly on the timeline, which I think before yeah. was a basically a project setting. It's like you were only seeing source labels or you were not seeing source labels. So that's yeah. great because you know he can he can just change the label. He you know one adjustment layer in the project browser, and he can just change the color of it on um, on the timeline instead of having to you know, add more assets that aren't really doing right. much for you in the project browser and more assets awesome. to manage. So, um, okay. yeah. Yeah. So from here, what we're going to, what we would do is we would set our in and out point around this clip, you know, for VO <laughs> because it's, you know, this is my section. I want to make sure that, you know, you can use, um, the keyboard commands. Again, this is also like what's, <laughs> simple ish about this is that you know someone who's not a motion or a um a video editor can kind of go in they can kind of do this sort of simple task and it makes sense for them um and then from there we're going to export i'm i'm going to sort of just show i'm not going to actually do this but you know we we go to we do our waveform you know we make sure it's you know we label it properly something like vo you know, at the, at the stuff X, and then we, you know, hit export, um, which I'm just going to... What are your thoughts on this latest addition or update to the export panel here? As a motion designer, I in, I find it intuitive. I don't know, Justin, for someone who's doing far more exporting out of... Mm -hmm. um, I, I mean, I... I like it. I mean, it's, it's, to me, it's iterative from before, you know, so mm -hmm. it's, you know, it's not a sea change. I think to me, the, the export folder is much more connected or the new export module is, um, less of a sea change than the import module, um, was. So, um, yeah. I, it works for me. I'm al almost always sending things nice. to media encoder. Um, anyway, anyway. But, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Which doesn't really change anything at that point if you were, yeah. Right. Is, uh, great point. Right. So are, are we now moving over to AE, uh, Mike? Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. so imagine that I've exported my audio. This is, this is it right here. This is my section of VO. Um, this is in my motion graphics, um, uh, directory this is or i'm sorry this is in sorry here it is it's our demo video this is our section that i just exported so this is this is in a different place on lucid link you can see the pins here because we're working yeah. on it you know we're working very um you know we're, we're working all the time in motion graphics in the in this directory so i have it pinned i have everything within it pinned um and then this is uh, a local project that we work off of um we were working in um uh, team projects for After Effects for a while, but there were some bugs, and we can talk about that sort of later in this in this session about what what sort of prevented us from doing that. But so you know, I'm I'm opening my project, and sort of similar to Justin, um, we have um, sort of elements built in uh, or like templatized out. So there are things you know we have sort of our sections labeled sort of accurately. Things like background colors. Uh, this mm. sort of background texture. So this is a this is actually like from our actual um, 
just the fact this is a much more complicated sequence than we'll we'll demo today but you know we we are able to sort of pre-build a, a lot of the elements so that they can be in there things like colors things like shapes um things like text on screen you know often our text operates in the same sort of style um yeah. it's the same font it's the same size so you know things of that nature that's all sort of pre-built here but things like you know the thing that i'm showing right now this sort of diabetes um the the way that blood sugar sort of is ingested by the body that's something that we're making um fully from scratch and we can show you sort of we're, we're going to show you a little bit of that right now okay. so you know um so basically like i'm gonna pull you know i would normally pull in my my audio um you know we have a vo folder again sort of labeling as much as we can here to make sure it it um is clear if anybody else needs to open this project if, if i need to share it with another designer you know we're able to sort of navigate it all the same way so in this you know pretend this is a blank sequence or a blank comp i'm pulling in my audio um and you can see it, it can here. affect your heart lungs and brain and i'm able to build out my sequence um and then you know just one thing obviously is that i'm pulling in um after uh, illustrator files to sort mm -hmm. of work off of and to work as elements so i, I can also demo that right now and i, I will we'll do that for you um, so, you know, we're going to like pull in, you know, in the same sort of folder uh, directory that our project is in, we have our assets folder and in here we're, we're and, you know, we're using a lot of elements that are also from Getty, we're kind of mixing, um, you know, things that we're, we're creating original, you know, original illustration files, but also in the turnaround time, you know, we're often pulling, pulling raw assets from Getty. Um, and so this demo illustrator file, um, I can actually... Yeah, so I just pulled it in. I just imported it. Um, it's co it comes in as I'm sorry. I actually did that a little quickly. Let me show, do that one more time. Yeah. So well, while I mean, you're doing that, let me ask you now: Are no. these are are all of these assets typically from like a, like Getty or a stock service, or are you are you actually doing a lot of this stuff in Illustrator in Illustrator yourself? <clears throat> um, so it depends on our turnaround time. Generally, we we need um, generally we have a script. We have about a week or a week and a half to really create mm -hmm. these things um, amongst. Okay. You know, uh, with with the idea that we're also balancing other other requests, right. not just right. the series. So we're often pulling from Getty for very specific, um, you know, types of types of uh, you know. Vector it would just take, yes, yes, yeah. exactly. Mm -hmm. um, and especially since you know, it could take a while to figure out. Like, oh, I've never maybe illustrated a heart before. What's the right type of heart? Right. Those kinds of things. <laughs> it's, it's, it's much easier um, to to do. To, to go to a service like that. Um, and, yeah. and Gannett has a relationship with Getty. We have an account. Um, sure. Yeah, and different, you know, and that's, you yeah. know. So, no shade for not mentioning yeah. Adobe stock, Mike. It's fine. It's yeah, okay. you know, I, I, it's, I was thinking about I that. I was like, oh, yeah. Um, no, 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 no. That's, listen, yeah. that's, you know, that that's what this is all about. Like, it would, it would be weird to some degree. Like, you're, wait, you're, you're Gannett USA Today. I would think you have some relationship. <laughs> well, so I mean, to, makes, to that, that point, sense. like, A, we do have a, an incredibly robust photo library to rival to rival Getty, honestly. Um, yeah, so they sure. obviously push us to use that. Um, yep. In addition, you know, I'll be super honest. I mean, we had the Getty and AP accounts, you know, before we had our Adobe stock account, and there right. was a lot of users who are just very entrenched in sure. and just very yeah. used to it. Um, so just yeah, and they know they know what to too. find and where to find it and how it. Yeah, I, I get that. It, it, it makes sense. Yeah. So sorry. And just to to sort of back up a bit, when I when I'm pulling in um, these Illustrator files, I'm just making sure what what kind of how how do I want this uh, asset to import? Is it going to import as you know just footage, which would flatten a lot of the layers, or you know you're going in and you're choosing a specific layer, and that comes in as an you know comes in as a singular object. What I want to do is hit composition, and then you know document size is fine. It's basically taking the documents. It's creating a comp the size of a um, the size of the Illustrator document itself. Um, and, you know, there it is basically with these layers here, yep. you know, already stacked. You know, in this demo comp, I've sort of went ahead and I just sort of did a couple things. Um, you know, I added my effects. I added uh, a little bit of rough and edges. I changed the colors a bit with fills, making them more USAT, um, sort of, you know, related to our, our, our brand package. You said uh, is USA Today. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I was just going to ask. I, I assume, but I was like, maybe that's something else. Yeah. So, and then, you, you know, ti timing heart, things out. Lungs 
and brain. To this VO. Um, I often, you know, we often put a little bit of time either on the end or on the front so that editors have a little bit of, you know, ability to either do a fade or something sure. to that effect yeah, if they, yeah. if they yeah. would like. Um, so but, we sort of generally do, we try to have them frame accurate with with the the audio so it's able, able to just be kind of just dropped in place but as mike said we get, give them some handles on that you have some handles yeah. right but they're, they're not really trying to retime things to fit in any, in any yeah no He's, yeah mike's handle it on his side yeah that makes sense yeah absolutely and then you know from here again i just want to sh show quickly that you know um we could if we wanted to from here also make you know in this instance i'm sort of treating these as sort of uh, static assets that your have moves on them, but no internal movement. Um, so that's why there's, I've sort of left them as these um, illustrator layers or yeah. they sort of, you know, acting as solo objects. But, you know, I could also go in and, you know, um, we can create, you know, a vector from the shape and that, that has made, you can see that it's muted, you know, it's, it's made invisible the uh, layer that I had and now has given us almost an identical, um, asset or, or layer, but with, mm -hmm. you know, vector with the ability to sort of adjust the vector right. shapes themselves. So well, that's a little hard to see, but you know. Oh yeah. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, if, if we wanted to sort of do that, we could, you know, but, but in this, for this, for this one, you know, project, it sort of makes sense to, to keep it that way. So let me ask you just yeah. in talking about caches and things, cause this is, seemingly spinning up to real time very quickly so if, are you keeping like global performance cache local or i assume that's still local in this in after effects right yes because yeah. yes and often because uh, you know we're sharing projects but right. we are not um we're generally you know we don't have multiple people working in this project this isn't a team project um you know it, so you know you're going to be handing off a render in other words you're not you're not yes. needing the real time unedited make a change in the middle aspect of yes it. exactly yeah. and and yeah. just i just you know also because these um layers are connected to illustrator i just want to quickly show that you know i could um they Edit still original. are dynamically linked to the mm -hmm. to the illustrator yeah. project so i just want to do a little do you want to wait a sec? Because aren't we going to? Sure. We'll okay. show that when we do the the revision to the graphic. Is that oh yeah, that's right. I'm sorry. I'm no, that's jumping fine. Ahead. No, that's I'm jumping fine. ahead. I'm all over the place. I'm off script. No, he's good. <laughs> we're good. Off the um, <laughs> and Jason, if you want to get into why we're choosing to, you know, do like a render out, um, not effect. a dynamic link. I'm happy to get into that um, too. Yeah. Well. Yeah. I mean, I think you kind of answered it. I mean, it sort of makes sense in this context. I. I mean, I'm curious if there's a difference, but it would seem like in this sort of workflow, it does, I mean, I guess maybe it would be nice for you to see it in the context of your timeline as Mike's doing it, but realistically, especially because you have it so sort of templated and it's just easy to make these things, it just sort of speeds it up for him to hand you that render. And I suppose theoretically, you, a dy I mean, yeah, well, you tell me why Why not a dynamic link? Yeah, I mean, well, this makes sense. sure. Yeah, well, yeah, um, you know, and it, it's, mostly a function of this, you know, the way this kind of workflow needs to work for this project, yeah. um, this idea that they are bespoke graphics. Um, you know, originally, you know, originally we didn't, we kind of eschewed the dynamic link route because we felt there wasn't a need to continually be rendering it on the fly in the right. sequence. Um, or exactly. there was too much there was too much adjusting going on that it didn't make, you know, that if you were going to render it on the timeline, you would have been constantly re-rendering it, re-rendering it. So right. this was and a lot of that. It would have to do with the timing of the VO anyway, which you, you're, you're, once you send it to the, 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 the designer, you're, it's, it's locked. You're not changing exactly. that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so, mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it was really just like fewer times rendering or, or less yeah. time spent rendering overall. Um, you know, a big part of that is also, these graphics don't get a ton of revisions either. And we're going to show you that they do get revisions, but it, you know, it's not like they're getting just like endlessly tweaked and it makes sense to have those tweaks visible in real time. So um, that was kind of the biggest reason. Um, one other thing we found is that when you're in a premier team project and you do a dynamic link out, it, kind of creates an after effects team project but what's 
we found that there is this interesting um, line or wall that has been kind of broken down between there's not a real distinction between a premier pro mm. team project and an after effects team project. So you okay. do this dynamic link and all of a sudden you're in the after effects team project. Um, but what happens is the browsers between each program then end up needing to be synced essentially. Right. So you okay. start to see comps and bins <laughs> in premiere and you start to see bins and sequences Right. In, in After, After Effects, Effects side. <laughs> and yeah. for this particular workflow, there was there was no need for that kind of shared visibility across the two yeah. projects. Um, we felt that it just kind of added some visual noise. You know, again, mm -hmm. dealing with a lot of people who might not be super organized, uh, it was just it was just kind of too much stuff to kind of to cut yeah. through. Um, but you know, we see that as being a really useful thing for the, you know, the editor who's also doing their own motion graphics and like how sure, easy that would right. be to just uh, kind of keep it in this sort of this one space as well. But um, so that's right. why it's not really a handoff. But you're keeping it in a, in a team project environment. Yeah, but the, and but the so work you know, is done by one versus multiple. Yeah, yeah. and it's reflected back sense. in the reflected back in the other where you might want to see that. So yeah, right. so that's what that's why we've kind of skewed uh, dynamic linking in the team project as it as it, it exists for now. Yeah. So okay, yeah. yeah, that makes total sense. Yeah. Um, all right, so Mike, you were at the point that you were um, rendering out your graphic, right? Yeah, you're rendering that's right. Out your so, V1. Yep. Yeah. V1 is being rendered out. It's in, you know, it's on on Lucid um, for Justin to grab. It's right here. I think you all can mm -hmm. see that, right? Yeah. yeah. So it's there. If you want to flip back over to me, Jason. Sure. And Justin, I'm just going to publish my changes from from please, the from the. Please yeah. do. Okay, so um, this is I. This is my Finder. It's the exact same location that Mike just saw um i'm on some pretty wicked fast internet so my stuff uh, uploads and down and, and downloads pretty quick so i not even didn't even get to see any of those indicators but um yep. so now i have the graphic file here so um and look there's a couple ways that we can do this if say i'm you know my editor is just head head down really in the weeds kind of getting what they need to done need to be done done mike's part of the prop the project now mike could deliver this asset directly into a bin into the project and just say yep. hey it's there whenever you need it um often the editor you know it's just a ping like hey that graphics ready but um you know so these are you know these are the ways you can sort of eliminate some of that back and forth chat if you need to some ways to just kind of like just skip the middleman boom it's there so um so i'm gonna i'm gonna go ahead and import this new graphic in i got it up right here i'm just gonna go uh simple um i you know i will make, go ahead and make some comments about the recent uh, i don't know how much you kind of compared and con contrast the um the recent updates to team projects but i do just kind of want to point out um that all this information that we're getting in this new version with with changes and these kind of incremental um you, you can see uh, on a more granular level what's happening in your project is the probably the biggest improvement yeah. we've seen to team projects in the last two years because our 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 big problem was just visibility was was knowing who is in what sequence yes. because you had to avoid that if you didn't avoid who was in what sequence you would cause conflicts and yeah. someone could someone could lose work so a lot of our organizational structures in this in this protocol of like duplicating every sequence and putting your names was all to sort of help avoid these conflicts and to get the information that we weren't getting but now we're getting this so i can see yep. on a granular level who is in what sequence who who is um you know which things have updates available and that's really really useful just for your confidence in navigating yeah. this project because before there was this element of like you know i hope i'm not yeah, hope someone else yeah. isn't in there because yeah. like i gotta do this um I, so that's that's I huge I made a point to call that. By the way, if I can get you to just minimize that little, there's a little hide thing at the bottom of your screen oh. there for the sharing, the little white bar at the bottom. Do you oh, see yeah, it? thanks. Sorry. There you go. Um, <laughs> I made a point to call that out too, just like the UI elements of telling you, oh, Mike's in this project, someone's editing, the, the, the new color coding around those things is so, so improved. And just, just, just that much more obvious because that was, I think, a, a major pain point for some 
where they, they had confidence, but without really knowing, eh. and then you get into the, oh, do we merge this, copy this you yeah. know, scenario? Yeah. And, that gets and you know, we have another project with um, basically a, a long form, mid form, like kind of news sports magazine show. And, you know, this is something that gets shot long form and then sliced and diced into like every conceivable thing. And like, I literally have five people in the same project at the same time. You know, I have, I have yeah. like an AE setting up a multicam. I have someone doing a cut on a segment. I have someone cutting that segment down to VOD, you know, to, to short form. Um, so that visibility of who's doing what and just right at your fingertips you know, just, just, again, just speeds things up. I'm not saying, uh, what, what sequence are you in? Or, uh, what are you working on? And that person's on lunch and they don't get back to me and I, <laughs> everything grinds to a halt. Right. So <laughs> uh, again, it's this communication, this information is just like, is just right in front of your face. So, um, yes. okay. So, so I had my, so I imported the, the new, the new graphic. Um, I am going to, so meanwhile, I'm going to open this new sequence. So meanwhile, while Mike was working on that graphic, our editor went ahead and duplicated it again and incremented to V3. And they were working on all the other parts. So they were doing the, uh, the stock B-roll sections of this video. They threw some, some music down in here. Um, we do like remix a lot um, yeah, for, nice. for this. Um, most uh, uh, most liked feature in a recent Reddit poll that I did was remix. Good, good, because yeah, you know yeah. what you know what it is for me. Like, I'm I'm a sting it out kind of guy. You know, I know there's there's a there's a big battle whether you got to sting it out or whether the fade works. I'm right. a big sting it out kind of guy, yeah. and yeah. and teaching that to a producer editor and getting them to care about that can be tricky. And yeah. uh, remix has really kind of like saved my life on that because i'm like yeah. look it's stung out you're good yeah. well let me let me ask you about that too so i was commenting so it's interesting i had a lot of comments from people and i i of course uh, so i'm a engineer musician composer myself and i but i was talking about well because they were saying and you'll you'll understand this so you know remix one of the things that it does is that it does have this sort of plus or minus five second buffer Right at the at the end, so a lot of times you can drag it to you know where that hit is on that last frame of video, but there's a couple of extra. It could be milliseconds. It could be an extra second or two, just because it's trying to maintain the beat structure. Right. So, one of the requests that we've had as well, couldn't you just still while still doing the remix without using like a stretch algorithm, right? Because it's not doing a stretch. Um, couldn't you just make it fit? And I said, well, yes, but. It's trying to maintain, like in a four-four time, you know, pop song, rock song, uh, uh, whatever, dance track, whatever, the, whatever the underscore is. It's trying to maintain that beat structure so it's the same. So yes, it could cut out a beat or two here or there. Average person would never know, and then it would be the exact time. But today, it doesn't exactly do that. It tries well, to maintain the same time. Yeah, and what I tell people is, like, it's like it can't break the laws of time and space you know what i mean it's like like you said well, it's it could gotta, it's not it, doing it now it could but i don't know if you'd want it to right you yeah know I mean? well that's but, interesting that you say that because i and by the way i'm all for it but like that's the thing is i think in fact i was i was calling this out recently and i'm sure the two of you do this you know problem is you edit this kind of stuff you do so much of this it's hard to watch anything right? because you're breaking it down one way or the other and i was watching i won't call it out but i was watching some commercial the other day Anyway, there was some music going on underneath, and they absolutely cut out every fourth beat for about 10 seconds. So the, the drums were just off, right? It was like missing one snare hit every fourth beat. They just cut it out so that it could end right on that sting at the end. And uh, I was telling this to my wife, and she's like, you, you need to get out of the house. And I was telling her, though, I said, no, 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 but no. average person's not going to care. You didn't care. She goes, no, I don't care. Uh, and it fit perfectly. So that's one way to do it, right? Yeah. And uh, well, this kind of makes me think of some of the suggestions people were asking. It's like, most I, people will never notice, and as long as it fits and you get that boom right at the end, particularly in, you know, if you're doing sort of broadcast commercials or whatever, yeah. no one really cares, well, right? 
Uh, yeah, I, mean, I agree. I'm glad we do. Uh, my argument, well, I agree. I, my argument is that maybe people don't notice, maybe people don't care, but they still are affected by the choice because <laughs> of right. be, because of the subconscious nature of what video <laughs> yes. editing does. You know, so. that's right. That's right. All right, All right I like it. Come down like off it, straight real quick. No, <laughs> I, hey, listen, you're in the right you're in the right place to be in that box. I, <laughs> right? I love it. Um, cool. So, all right. So, um, yeah, so we were in here, um, while Mike was working on that graphic, the editor was moving the edit along, moving the timeline along. Um, so we've got some music, we've got some of these other sections, um, ready to go. Um, so I'm ready to bring Mike's graphic into, uh, into our timeline. So I'm just going to go ahead. Um, and this was just duplicated. So, you know, this, it's just incrementally building upon. So I'm, here's here's the section I'm I'm covering now. Uh, I know the graphic that he gave me was an alpha graphic, so I've just kind of thrown a little background on here. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead. We're and... not getting your sound for some reason, but I won't I won't worry about it for now. I don't need you to. We can still. And we know oh, you're not hearing me. The heart. No, from Premiere. The brain. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh, I, I don't think. Yeah, I, yeah. No. sorry. Your voice is fine. Yeah, we're not getting your Premiere sound. Oh, you. We're getting it uh, with mics, okay. but not not you. But let, we won't worry about it. It's okay. Fine. Yeah, it's not too much. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to go ahead and don't need my audio. Go ahead and edit that in. So that's looking good to me. Very nice. By the way, oh, hey, Christine Steele. She's chiming in and saying, she said, uh, I appreciate hearing these professional personal preferences as regards to your real world experience, subtle subframe details make a difference in feel and final quality. Preach it. Christine That's, knows. Uh, you know. That's right. <laughs> exactly. Yes, indeed. Oh, and Andrea Stewart is saying, remix is a problem when you're using with unlicensed music and then need to replace it with the license. It might help to have straight lines to show the cuts instead of zigzags. So I could speak to that. You know, Andrea, that's actually, that's interesting that you bring that up because of course you don't really see the zigzags I guess you do see them on the Premiere side too now, don't you? Yes, initially you didn't. Yeah. Um, but of course, the Remix engine, which is a, an AI ML based thing, even if you, it, it should do it exactly the same, but it's not guaranteed to do the Remix exactly the same every time. So I hear what you're saying. Um, yeah, I don't know the solution to that. Yeah. Even with the same settings, if you know, the sometimes that M4A file, which just has less fidelity, yeah. The engine could, says like, oh, I can cut it. Yeah, it cuts it differently sometimes. And that, that choice could be based on your, your music cue reporting needs as well. Mm -hmm. You know, like yep. sometimes yep. some people need that needle drop like every time. But um, just yep. I'll just make one more mention on, on Remix before we move on. Um, you know, to that point of like, getting that like perfect spot that you want it to land on. Mm -hmm. What I found is, you know, here, let me go ahead and actually cue one up. Um, and by the way, just for just so you know, we have approximately four minutes left. Oh, all right. Then the let's time, move ahead. I'll tell you, it flies by. You're right. right. Let's move ahead. Okay, sorry. So, all right, we got our <laughs> we got our edit down here. We're gonna star wipe forward. Um, let me get this in the right place. Um, so we would have. Um, so basically, we have a a, a full edit. Um, we get we get back basically back down to we have a full edit. So now what I could do is I'm gonna in, I can invite a producer in to instead of exporting this out to Frame.io, even using the panel, having them put in the comments. I've got Premiere savvy producers, so I'm gonna bring my producer in. I'm gonna go ahead and invite them. Um, he's on vacation. He won't uh, he, he won't, won't mess things up. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna go ahead and invite my my producer. My producer can kind of come in, you know, we're just going to have them drop, drop their notes wherever they want. Um, so yeah. for here, they're going to drop a note. They're like, you know what? We want to change the color and make the trach bigger, make the trachea bigger. So, um, and again, your reasoning for doing that in this context is basically it saves you a render step in frame and you trust that they're they're reviewing also, but you could lock the sequence too. So they're not making a change. This is I one could of the, even, the new team projects things, right? I could yeah. even, I can even have it open and have them go into it as a view only sequence right. to and ensure they that they exactly. can't, and they can't, mm -hmm. they can't mess anything up. So yeah, um, just great. for time here. Um, so we we were asked to make a revision to, to a couple things. So what we can do now, Mike, if you could, if we could switch back over to Mike and hopefully we can get this out. 
Um, yep. And Mike, you got a minute and 49 okay. seconds. Do All right. It. All right. <laughs> He's just going to so make making, some I'm quick making changes. This bigger, making it bigger. Let's consider it that. All right. I'm hitting Good. save. Right. It's dynamically linked. Oh, there goes that trachea. It just got bigger. Wonderful. Yep. Uh, so he just made I that change in after change. in in Illustrator, and it just rippled through to, to After Effects. He's going to change the color. Thank you, thank you, Justin, for narrating. I've never felt so special. This is so cool. <laughs> um, here we are, and then I'm gonna, I'm literally gonna go and hit export. Right. You can tell you two work together a lot. <laughs> <laughs> we I finish like each other's sandwiches all the time. Yes. Right. right. <laughs> Sandwich, you got me there. Okay. And so what he's gonna yeah. do is he's gonna actually overwrite this file right now. He's gonna overwrite yes. it on disk because then it is just going to pop up on my timeline. I don't need to bring in a new file. I don't need to. Right. I don't need to um, re-import or anything. Yep. There's no. Yeah. I love that. I love that you're doing that. I know we're we're almost out of time. I love committing that. I love committing the re the the overwrite. I imagine, and I know talking to many. A lot of people don't do that. They want the revisions. They want all the versions. When you well, know, you Mike, know. And right? well, the way we do it, Mike's got them. So Mike has his his after. You know, he can always get back to that earlier version of the comp and sure, re-render it. Exactly. But he's also backing up. He's got a you know his own graphics uh, you right know, folders on on the LucidLink file space. So he's making you know, he's making backups. We can sort of you know right. leave that tracking uh, off the editor's plate. So. And that's an excellent point, is that he has that, and you, as the person sort of living in the Premiere environment, you don't need all those other things. You just want the one that's living in the timeline that's ready for that sort of final review, et cetera. So exactly. that makes total sense. Gentlemen, I'm sorry. We are we are out of time. <laughs> um, this was awesome. It was so great to have you. Thank you so much for your insights. Yeah, um, thanks. Kind of really going deep into all these workflow processes. Um, I hope we can kind of, maybe I can get you to come back again, and we can dive into some more projects. <laughs> Um, Love it. It was a true, true joy. All right. Thanks so much for sure. having us. Thank you. All right, everyone. Well, thank you again. You can catch more on Adobe Live today. And until then, have a great rest of your morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are in the world. And we'll see you again next time. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye. <laughs>